Hi, this is Oren Zucker, and on behalf of Dan Eberts, welcome to this quick overview on how Rubberize It works. We're going to start with an image, in this case an awesome vinyl figure, contributed by the very talented Nathan Urevichus. And I've got it doing a quick slide in. Next we're going to place our puppet pins down, select the layer, and just using the default settings, click Rubberize. And that's it, pretty simple. Now we're going to make some changes. I'm going to go select the pins on his ears, change the materials, make it sponge, and click Rubberize it again. And we get something like this. Now I'll change the speed, and it gets more subtle. And I speed it up, and it gets kind of crazy. Okay, now let's change the move. I'll have it doing a drop down from the top, and I'm going to clean the expression on the pins of his feet by selecting them and clicking clean. And it looks like this. Okay, so what just happened? What's going on is that Rubberize It is displacing the puppet pins based on the acceleration of the layer relative to the composition. That means it can react to layer changes in position, rotation, and scale, or even to motions inherited from a parent layer. How Rubberize It reacts is a complex stew of many factors which include the speed and interpolation of the keyframes in the motion, the amount and position of the puppet pins, the type and mix of materials you select, the placement of the pins you don't apply materials to, the chaos, the formula, and the position of your anchor point. All of which goes to say, there's a lot of things going on and the easiest way to figure it all out is to just go ahead and try it. The UI is built with experimentation in mind. Changes are very quick to make and apply, so instead of reading the manual, the best way to learn it is just to sit down and play with it. That said, Let's break down the different sections in more detail. We'll start with puppet pins, even though they're technically not in the UI. They're located in the upper menu. If you're working with something that needs continuous rasterization, you'll need to pre-comp it first. Otherwise, you can apply it directly to the layer itself. Materials are presets that come loaded with Rubberize It. The materials are broadly arranged in least to most bouncy, but there's variation so it's not exact. You can experiment with your own settings by clicking Custom in the drop-down box and playing with the settings. Let's define those. Frequency is the bounce frequency in oscillations per second. Decay is how fast the oscillations die out. And Amp sets the amplitude of the motion. The Chaos feature adds a random element to the material. Every time you hit the Rubberize button, it'll give you a different wiggle. If you don't like it the first time, keep trying. The two formulas are variations on the algorithm Dan wrote to create the effect. Each has its strengths and weaknesses. The formulas differ in the way they relate to the anchor point. Formula A is hinged to the anchor point, and Formula B pretty much ignores the anchor point. One key difference between them is that B needs clean pins, or unrubberized pins, to act like an anchor giving the other pins something to pull against. Formula A does not, but it can also benefit from them depending on what you're looking for. If you see the layer just kind of bouncing around, not deforming, that's pretty much telling you to put down at least one clean pin. There's a lot more to the rubberize button than meets the eye. It actually applies to rubberize it in three different ways depending on the situation. 1. If no pins are selected, and none have been previously rubberized, then all the pins will be rubberized. The second, if only some pins are selected, only those will be affected. The third thing to keep in mind is that once you have initially applied Rubberize It, there is no need to reselect pins to make the changes. Rubberize It will see which pins have expressions applied, and will only change those pins from that point on. This will save a lot of time selecting and deselecting pins. Clicking the Clean button will remove all the expressions from all the pins that have expressions applied to them. If you select specific pins, then only those pins will be cleaned. Make sure you get to know the different ways that Clean and Rubberize work. 
It's pretty simple, but it will be key to controlling rubberize it and saving you a lot of time and energy. When you click on bake, it'll turn the expressions into keyframes. This will really come in handy when you're dealing with a lot of individual letters. If you do decide to do it, I suggest making a duplicate of the comp first before you go ahead and bake it. So that's it, the basics of what you need to know to get rubberize it up and running. Good luck and happy rubberizing!